Let us begin our service today with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for a privilege and honor to be able to come together here this day. I pray the Lord your anointing be upon this service, and I pray that you'll bless each father here today. I uh, thank you for their service, and I pray, Lord, that uh, today that we'll be challenged to be faithful in our jobs and our duties that's been installed upon us from heaven above. I pray that you'll be uh, with each heart here today, plant, prepare each of our hearts, and I pray, Lord, that you'll direct each of our steps. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. We have a, a debut this morning. Y'all know me and Steve, but this is, this is Bobby McKegg. We've been friends a long time, okay? We sang together in the quartet. I played, he sang, and he's a great tenor singer, so we have a little trio for this morning.
Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you this morning thanking you for all of your blessings and who you are. Blessing your name, Father. We ask you that you'd be with those that couldn't be here today, Father, that are sick and for traveling and for other reasons. We ask you to bless them. Give them safe travel back to be with us. We ask you to be with those that are sick, those that need healing, those that need spiritual healing, Father. We ask you to touch them with your Holy Spirit and with your healing spirit. We ask you to be with us as we go through the rest of the service, Father. We ask you to be with Brother Milan this morning. Give him your words that we stand in need of in this hour. Amen. If you have your Bibles, you turn with me this morning to Joshua chapter 23. Joshua chapter 23. I was looking uh, in my before just a moment ago, looking at my driver's license. It's going to expire this year, by the way. Y'all, y'all help me remind me of that. But people use their driver's license for an ID uh, to recognize who they are. I don't know if y'all have ever heard of fake IDs before. It gives uh, height, weight, I think that's before supper time. <laughs> Eye color and hair color. Some of them are fake. Some of them are fake. Our fake IDs are to give an impression of who we are. A fake ID gives an impression of somebody that we're not. A lot of young people would use a uh, fake ID to fake their age. They want to pretend to be older than they really were. They'd have a fake ID. I, I believe people come to church every Sunday with a fake ID, pretending that uh, and trying to appear that everything is okay, that everything's fine. A lot of people carry the fake ID that uh, they have nothing to worry about when they die. They're going to go to heaven because they're saved. But they're carrying a fake ID. God knows a fake. He can see a fake from a mile away. I had a $100 bill the other day. I went to the store and bought something with it. And I remember they got it up and looked at it. I don't know what they're looking at, but they looked at it. They put it in the drawer and they handed me back my change. I just got it out and I looked at it. <laughs> I said, I don't want you to look at that, but I was going to look at mine too. Make sure you ain't giving me a fake back. But a lot of times we're faking it like everything is fine. I don't know the difference. And there are many other people that don't know the difference. But God does know the difference. I entitled the message this morning, Time for Leaders To lead. It's a time for leaders to lead. We live in a time that's growing worse and worse. The problem, I don't think, is the people around us. I think it's the lack of leadership. Even looking at our country, we can see where we're going. I, I don't think people is the problem. I believe a lack of leadership is missing. I believe our churches may not be baptizing as many people as they baptized in the past. I saw that in the Alabama Baptist the other day. I don't believe there's less people that need to be saved. I believe there's lack of leadership. We come to a day that we recognize once a year as Father's Day. Father's Day, I would hope, would be a Day to challenge a leaders. Now, I see young couples coming to me about marrying them and different things. And I see these young guys, they say, uh, where's that part about obey in there? You know, that's what they want to see. I, I think they got the wrong concept of what being a leader is. A leader is not a boss. A, a leader is not a, a judge, a leader is someone that shows the way. As an example, 
I think we need more leaders today. Joshua was a leader. Joshua was a leader. Uh, let's look at verse 1. He said, It came to pass a long time after the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about, and Joshua waxed old and stricken in age. And Joshua called for all Israel, notice that all Israel, and for their elders, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and said unto them, I am old and stricken in age. What he's saying is, I've come to the point in my life where I'm getting to the point where I can't lead anymore. In fact, my time on this earth is short. And I'm not going to be here to lead. And when I leave and not able to be here to lead, who's going to lead? Who's going to lead? And his concern was that Israel, God's chosen people, was not going to have a leader. Now, what made Joshua special? We need to look at who Joshua was and is. Joshua was one of those guys that knew what it was like to live in Egypt. He knew what it was like to live as a slave. He knew what it was like to not have the opportunities that the people had today. He knew what it was like. And he knew how that God had come to deliver them. God had heard their prayer and changed their lives. He knew that. Romans 7, 6 says, But now we are delivered from the law that bringeth death wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. That's sort of exactly the way Joshua was. I remember how it used to be. It's not that way anymore. I don't want to go back to that place. I know what it was like. And thanks to God, I'm not there today. And it sort of covers it a little more in this chapter and a little bit more in chapter 24 of all the things that God has done, what he's brought them through. If you remember, Joshua was one of those guys that had saw the miracles of God, saw the plagues of God, saw the miracles of God, and how the, it came time to enter into the promised land, and out of all the, the 12 guys that went out to spy upon the promised land, came back out of the 12, there was two guys that wanted to lead Israel into that promised land. There was two guys out of the 12 that said, I want our my family over there. I want my grandchildren over there. I want it. And I'm willing to lead us there. I'm willing to be a leader to get them that. Ten of them said, I, I don't do that. Too hard. It's too hard. There's men sometimes sitting in a pew today and women that knows that the Holy Spirit is leading to a better life. But they're afraid, just as the ten spies were afraid to be a leader. Folks, you don't even have to be an adult to be a leader. I've seen children be a leader. The first one is willing to step up and follow God. I've seen revivals break out because of a six-year-old child being a leader, of getting on her knees and praying to God. Joshua was a leader. And he said, I'm calling out. I'm calling out for leaders to step up. It's time to be in charge of leading the people. A lot of people want the, the, the recognition of being a leader. A lot of people may want the, the position and, and the title and the money that goes on to be a leader, but they don't lead. Lead means you've got to be out in front of everybody, right? You can't lead in the middle of a pack. That's what when, most people like to do. They like to just get in the middle of a pack. I just want to sit in the pew and do what everybody else is doing. That's not a leader. That's not a leader. I'm doing the same thing everybody else is doing. That's not a leader. You've got somebody that's willing to, to step out from the crowd and lead the crowd. 
He says, I'm calling them together. Calling them together. And challenging them that they need to step up and be leaders. So we talked a little bit about who Joshua is. Let's look about who God is. In verse 3 he said, And you have seen all that the Lord your God hath done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that has fought for you. It's the Lord that's fought for you. Now I have divided unto you by lots these nations that remain to be an inheritance for your tribes from Jordan with all the nations that I have cut off even to the great sea westward. So we see who God is. God's the one that has been with them thus far. God's the one that's got them from plan A to plan B. God's got them from the old lifestyle to the new lifestyle. He got them from slavery to freedom. God is a leader. God's willing to step out and make the first step. He sent his son to die upon the cross. He's willing to be a leader. Jesus was a leader in his life. He didn't just join the crowd. He was a leader. I want to think about all the things that God's done for you and all the fathers that we have here today. I'm blessed to have a family. I'm blessed. You know where it came from? It came from God. I need to give God credit. Just as God gave me this family, God can take this family away from me. God's in charge. God is good. For a leader, we need to recognize where our strengths are. Now, if I were to come in here today and say, look, guys, I'm going to lead y'all and I'm going to show y'all how to cook. I'd be leading you down the wrong path, okay? If you followed my examples, we would lose a lot of weight around here. Because I couldn't lead you down that, because that's not my strengths, okay? But I do know what my strengths are. My strength that's what got me here today to where I am today isn't my knowledge, isn't not my abilities. My strengths lies within the Father. He is my strength. Isn't it amazing how we, we've got ourselves here and we kind of think we've done something? We've not done anything. Just God. I, I've told this story before, a little joke, and uh, just bear with me. I know you've heard it before, but I like, like it. The little wood, woodpecker, where he gets at, flying around and he finds this little tree and he just goes to work on it. You know, pick, 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 pick. He just goes to working on just pecking as hard as he can at this little tree. All of a sudden, it come up this little cloud and here's a bolt of lightning and hits that tree that that woodpecker's on. Splits that tree right down the middle, knocks that woodpecker off and knocks him unconscious. He's laying on the ground and finally the woodpecker comes to and he looks at the tree, split half in two. And he says, my, look what I have done. He has done nothing. Folks, where we are at today, we've not done anything. If it wasn't for God, we wouldn't be here. He's the one that gives us uh, this ability to walk and to talk, to be able to do the job that we've done. Oh, I've done this. God does it through us. God provides it all. The same God that provides it can take it away. He goes on a little further and says, And the Lord your God, he shall expel them from before you and drive them from out of your sight. And you shall possess their land as the Lord your God has promised unto you. Be you therefore very courageous, the word means brave, to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that you turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left hand. Said, God's here with us. 
God is doing great things for us. We don't need to get away from God. If we get away, God's got us here and God's getting us further along the way. But if we get to the the left or to the right, we're getting away from God. And when we get further away from God, guess what? We're getting further away from accomplishing great and mighty heights. He says we need to remember that. We need to be courageous and say, I'm going to stay with God. You've got to be brave to be a leader to do that. Listen to me. In this world that we live, you've got to be brave to step up and say, I'm going to follow God. Oh, he's a nut. What about Noah? He's over here building on this ark that God had told him to build. Nobody else was doing that. He was doing that. Everybody was saying, he's lost his ever-loving mind. He's building a boat out here not even close to the water. What's he doing? You know what he's doing? He's following God. He didn't follow the crowd. If he followed the crowd, guess what? He would perish as well. But he said, I'm going to be a leader and I'm going to follow God. I'd like to say that thousands of people followed him, his leadership, but they didn't. Not even all of his family. But a few did. A few did. Folks, we don't need to look at the crowd behind us. We just need to lead. I won't say that everybody's going to follow your lead and everybody's going to do what you tell them to do. You may be a a, a dad or a mom. You can't control what your children are going to do. But one thing you can do, you can lead. You can lead. I'm going to jump way ahead and I'm coming back. You know what what Joshua say in chapter 24? He said, choose you this day whom you will serve. That's what he said in verse 15. Whether there be gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood of the gods of Amorites in whose land you dwell, but it's for me in my house. This is what I'm going to do. We're going to serve the Lord. Why? Because God is our strength. God is our happiness. God is the only thing that we've got going for. And that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to lead down that path. It's time for leaders to be leaders. We want to be leaders. We need to lead. I really believe a lot of churches today are just grazers. We all just congregate together. This is graze. We're not going anywhere. We're not accomplishing anything. But God says, and he's saying here through Joshua, we need somebody to lead. Verse 7, he says here, that you come not among these nations. These that remain among you, neither make uh, mention of the names of their gods, nor cause to swear by them. Neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them, but cleave unto the Lord your God, as you have done unto this day. For the Lord had driven out from before you great nations and strong. But as for you, no man had been able to stand before you unto this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand. For the Lord your God, he it is, that fighteth for you as he has promised you. He says, if you'll stick with God, be the leader. Uh, the leader means following God. We're not here to lead God. A leader is a follower. Not of crowd, but of God. If you follow God, you are the leader of those behind you seeing what you're doing. He said, if you'll do that, you'll be able to overcome all the enemies that come before you. Folks, I'm going to promise you, enemies are going to come up. A church, enemies are going to come up. A family, enemies are going to come up. But when we lead in following God, we can overcome all those enemies. A thousand. We may think we can handle it. But we can do all things through God. Let me tell you something. I was sitting over with little Elijah the other day, sitting on the porch, and I I seen an ant. I said, kill that ant. Well, he's over there stomping on it. 
And he's still crawling off. I don't know what he was doing. I was hitting in the, between the gaps in his soles. I don't know. I took my little finger and I went over and I just mashed him. That little wank couldn't do me no harm. But if you've ever stepped in an ain't heel, you kind of got overpowered. I'm not going. I'm doing a lot more swinging and dancing. And miserable. In fact, I flee from the situation or the position that I'm in. They can alter my position. They can move me from that place. I mean, when you step an ant here, you say, I'm not letting old little ant move me out of here. They're going to move you. They're going to move you. Either that or you just lost it, one of the two. But with God, all these things that keep coming at you, you may be, I can fight off a little bit. But you may be here today, and you've got more than a little bit that's on you. There's a lot on you, to the point that it's moving you away from being a leader, distracting you. The problem is we're looking at the problem rather than the solution. Are you here today looking at the problems that you've got? Oh, my job, my money, my marriage, my children. If you look at all those things, guess what? You're going to be overpowered. But if you quit looking at your problems and start looking at the solution, then you got to whip then. You don't see that problem. All you see is solution. Because He is our solution. But be that leader, we must follow. A lot of people are, you know what they're doing? According to God's word, they're serving themselves. Romans 16, 17, and 18 says this. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. And avoid them, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own bellies. Those that do the things other than following God are serving their own bellies, their own cause. There's some folks, you know what they want to do? They just want to worry, I believe. They just want to worry. The solution's God. I've told folks a lot of times, look, we just need trust. Preacher, you just don't understand my situation. You don't understand my situation. It's bad. I said, you just don't understand my God. He's greater than any problem or any situation. We need to trust God. Now, a lot of times we get ourselves in a fix. And we think when called to God, sometimes we're just reaping what we sow. Because it's got us to where we're at because we weren't following God. It's going to cause you pain. We need to trust God with all things. Cleaving to Him. And He'll fight for you. But He tells them a warning real quickly. He gives them a warning though. This is what God will do for you. If you follow him. But this is what it do for you if you don't follow him. If you don't lead in the ways of following him. And verse 11 says, Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that you love the Lord your God. Else, if you do in any wise, go back and cleave unto the remnant of this nation. Even these that remain among you and shall make marriages with them and go in with them and they with you. Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges, that means whips in your sides, and thorns in your eyes until you perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. He says, it's time for leaders to to be leaders in following God. If you don't do that, you just be like the rest of the crowd, guess what's fixing to happen? If you can't within yourself, a surety of yourself, say, I'm following God today and I'm leading my family. I'm leading my children. I'm leading my classmates. I'm leading the people I work with. I'm leading all those people around me the way that they should go. Folks, this is what's waiting for us. For God to take his hands off of us and turn us over to the enemies. 
turn us over. Verse 14 says, Behold, this day I am going the way of all the earth. And we know in all your hearts and all your soul that not one thing has failed all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. For are come, all are come to pass unto you, and not one thing hath failed thereof. Therefore, it shall come to pass that as all good things are come unto you, which the Lord your God promised you, so shall the Lord bring unto you all evil things until, excuse me, until he hath destroyed you from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. I don't care how many years you think everything's been going good, but it can all turn in a moment. In a moment. I've known folks that's been married for 50 years and be a divorce. It can be falling apart. Just as soon as we think we've got it under control, it can fall apart. We can raise our children up and think everything's wonderful, and just one day it all falls apart. When we're not leading, this is what's to come. Verse 16 when you have transgressed the covenant of the Lord, that means violated the covenant of the Lord your God, which He commanded you. Now go on and served other gods and bowed yourselves to them. Then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and you shall perish quickly from off the good land which he hath given unto you. The good land or the bad land? If you remember the, uh, the sower that goes out and sows the seed, says some seeds fell among the thorns, some fell upon stony places, some fell upon good ground. That fell upon good ground, did what? It grew and produced fruits. It says here, to be on the good ground and on the good land, you've got to follow God. If not, you're over on some of that land where you're not going to survive. It's not going to last. Folks, you put a smile on your face on Sunday, but you're being a hypocrite. You're, eye, you're appearing to be something that you're not. And if that's not leading and following God. It's not going to last. It's not going to last. I dare say some people go to church today and before they get home, their life's upside down. You know why? They're not leaders. When you're leading, you're going to be the same when you get home as you are at church. You're going to be the same on the weekend as you are on, uh, during any other day. You're going to be the same at work as you are in church. Why? Because you're a leader. There's a reward. God's word in Colossians says, knowing that of the Lord, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord your God. We re receive the things. Are we leaders today? Are we going backwards? Joshua says, my time is short. But I'm afraid that there's no leaders I, I listen, I, I look around this church and I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of the great leaders I've seen of this church aren't here anymore. A lot of the great leaders of this church are getting to the point where they can't lead anymore because they're like Joshua, they've come to the end of their days. And there's a concern that somebody's not stepping up. And I've got a concern for that for our church. There's a lot of folks that need to be stepping up that's not stepping up. We need to step up, be leaders, show the way. Folks, that can be all of us. But when we lead in the ways that God tells us to lead, we're going to find nothing but good things ahead. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we're so thankful.